So welcome to our live basic training webinars. My name is Judy Miller and today we're going to be doing the Campaign Builder Basics. So by the end of this webinar you'll be able to create a campaign and it's my favorite webinar of all because I show you how to put all the pieces together and automate Infusionsoft so it's so much fun. And I promised you another picture of the ocean so stay tuned because you may see one. So by the end of the webinar, you are going to be able to, and my slide doesn't look like it changed. There we go. By the end of this webinar, you're going to be able to create a simple campaign, and I'm going to show you how to get campaigns for free. And if anybody knows me, you know that I like to give you guys stuff for free to give you more value and get you, you know, your return on investment faster. So with your Infusionsoft application, you do have access to our Help Center. It's help.infusionsoft.com. There you have access to the user guide. So if you have any questions about the campaign builder, you can just type it on in the help.infusionsoft.com white bar and find out your answers with articles and videos. There's access to the tech support numbers. And there's also access to, to more self-help learning. So if you go to our Help Center and click on the Webinar tab, there's a basic training tab and there's also a mastermind tab. And the mastermind tab has videos right there on that page that are more upper level than these basic training webinars. And they also have categories like how to create a survey inside Infusionsoft, how to set up your products inside Infusionsoft. There's lots of different videos in there and they all have a category. Also, I'm going to be sending this Campaign Builder Basics workbook. I created a workbook for you all so that when you're watching the recording, you can print this out and go along with me, take notes, and answer some of the questions so that the learning really becomes yours. And I'll be sending that out to you with the recording probably around lunchtime. I'm also going to be sending this bonus gift. It's awesome. I'm going to pause for a second because I have to cough. Sorry, everything is blooming here right now. My allergies are like through the roof. This was created by one of our success coaches named Jill Gangler. It is a technical writing of every single piece of the campaign builder. I'm sure you use this more than you'll use a recording. I'm going to send this out to you in a PDF. It's about three pages long and it has every single arrow explaining what something is and down underneath it explains what it does. So you guys are going to love it. It's awesome and I'll be sending that to you after the webinar. So, Campaign Builder. I know this seems really simple, but there's only really two ingredients to build a campaign. Putting lots of those ingredients together will build a complex campaign, but just two ingredients will help you start the ball rolling with automation and build your first campaign. The first ingredient is a goal, and a goal is represented in Infusionsoft with a circle. A goal is what you want the contact to do. I want the contact to fill out a form. I want the contact to fill out a landing page. I want the contact to register for a webinar. I want the contact to click on a link. You can see we have lots of different goals. Web form submitted, landing page submitted, tag applied, email link clicked. These are our goals. Today we're going to focus on the one called web form submitted. That web form is kind of like a contact us form, opt-in form, register now form, sign up for our newsletter form. That's what a web form is. We call it a web form. You may call it a contact us form. It's represented by a circle in our campaign builder. That's ingredient number one. It's like the flour for your cake. You need that ingredient to start your campaign. The second ingredient is a sequence, and it's represented with that rectangle with the clock in the middle. When a goal is reached, it pushes people into the sequence, and the sequence is actually where the magic happens. All of the magic of Infusionsoft automation happens in that rectangle. I know it sounds crazy, but it really does. There's lots of stuff that can happen in that rectangle. You can send an email, put in a timer, maybe a two-day timer, send another email, Put in maybe a four-day timer, and four days later, create a task for yourself to give that person a call or to send them out a gift or a welcome package, etc. There's lots and lots of things that can happen inside that sequence. So, pretty simple. If you can put in 
a goal and attach it to a sequence inside Infusionsoft, you can build your first simple campaign. And a lot of people have made a lot of money with a very, very simple goal attached to a sequence campaign. All you need to remember is a goal is attached to a campaign. It starts out with a goal. I'm sorry, a goal is attached to a sequence. It starts out with a goal and it pushes people into that sequence. So let me get into Infusionsoft and show you how to build that out. When you first open up Infusionsoft, you're going to land on your dashboard. In order to get to the campaign builder, you're simply going to hover over the Infusionsoft logo, come over to the marketing section because we're talking about connecting and marketing, automation marketing, down to campaign builder, click it one time. Now you'll notice that I already have some campaigns in there. Those are campaigns that I keep as demos. If you want to start out with a pre-made campaign, I call it the Betty Crocker boxed campaigns, since we're talking about recipes. It's with this little white button right here this, to the right that says Get Campaign Templates. If you click there, you will be put into our template repository, and you can type in Birthday Campaign, and you can upload that right into your Infusionsoft application, but don't do it now. But I like to teach you how to build out the recipe first so you'll understand what those campaign templates consist of. So these are your Betty Crocker Boxed that are free. And I'm going to teach you how to build one from scratch by create a campaign. So I'm kind of like the Rachel Ray of Infusionsoft. I'm going to hit create a campaign. And when I do, when I hit that green button, this box appears. And it's asking you to name your campaign. You can name it whatever you want. My rule of thumb is make, name it what makes sense to you. And Chanel asked if you can test out a campaign before you launch it. I'm going to show you that during the webinar. So this box appears and it says name your campaign. If you have lots of people building campaigns out inside your Infusionsoft app, have them put their initials at the beginning. But name your campaign what it is. This is going to be sign up for special offers. And I'm going to call this, I'm just going to call it sign up for special offer and hit save. That's the name of my campaign. As soon as I name it, it opens up my canvas and I get to build out my whole campaign right here. If I don't like the name, you can see it on top, the top toolbar. Campaigns will bring me back to the library. Sign up for the special offer is the sequence that, or the campaign I'm in right now. And if you notice, all the way to the right, there's a button that says Actions. And I can come down and rename this campaign if I want to. So a campaign starts out with a goal. Here's our blank canvas, and I'm going to go into the goals right now, and I'm going to grab Goal. The goal that we're going to, follow, to use today is called a web form is submitted. So I'm going to grab the web form and drag it right onto the canvas. And when I do, a little blue box appears. That little blue box, and I'm doing my little air quotes, says, name me something different. Name me what I am. So I'm going to name it what it is. Offer, sign up, because that's what that form is. Pretty soon you're going to have thousands of forms, so you want to make sure you name them different things. This is my offer sign-up form, so I named it that. I like to put all my ingredients in the bowl first before stirring it around. So here's my goal. Make it a little bigger. Here's my goal. Now I'm going to go to the toolbox on the left-hand side, and I'm going to choose my sequence. Here's sequences right on top. I'm going to grab it, place it down next to the goal. And there's a little blue box that appears. And that blue box is saying, rename me. Don't leave me untitled sequence. Give me a name. So I'm going to call this Deliver Offer and more. Name it what it is so that when you're going out and building that campaign or you have somebody helping you out, they'll know exactly which sequence to go into. Now I have my goal and I have my sequence and I need to connect them together. In order to connect them together, I'm simply going to hover over the Infusionsoft logo, grab the little arrow, and smoosh it right into the middle of that box. And now they're attached. If you notice, it says Offer Sign Up, there's an arrow, and there's my sequence. If I'm going too fast, or you need me to repeat anything, please write it in the question box and I promise to get to you. If you notice, these are both kind of a gray-black color. Gray-black color means that it is 
in default mode. It means, well, we moved out the stuff, but we haven't really done anything to it yet. We haven't stirred it up. We haven't changed it. Sorry, had to pause for a second because I had a cough. Now I'm going to start building out my campaign. We're going to start with the web form. When I put my cursor right into the middle of that big circle and I double click, because I chose the web form as my goal, the web form builder is going to open up. Simple as that. It's going to look like this. This is my default form. Remember this because I'm going to mention it again. This is what the form looks like when you first open it up. I want to change some things to it, so it's in design mode and you get to come and design your form. Always remember best practices, only ask for the information that matches what, they're going to, what you're going to give them. If you're sending them a book in the mail, then you're going to need their address. If you're offering them a free consultation call, then you're going to need their phone number. I just need their first name and email address because I'm just asking them to sign up for my offers. But I want to put a title on this, so I'm going to come to Snippets, grab the title snippet, and place it right on top and change this to Get My Awesome Offers. Of course, you can highlight that, go up to the Format tab and change the color, change the size, etc. if you want to. I do want to put some space between my title and my first field because it's a little bit too squishy, technical term. I'm going to come grab a spacer, put it right underneath my title, and hit save, and now there's some space, and oh my gosh, that looks so much better. Less anxiety. Now, first name is already there, and email's already there. But if you need more snippets or more information that you want people to fill out, you simply come to Field Snippets. And in Field Snippets, you can grab a radio button, the phone field, the address field, but where's the last name field? I want their last name too. Well, there's not a last name field, but name is already included in there. So I'm just going to go to name and double click it inside my form box. And this box will pop up and it says, hey, what do you want to collect? Well, I want to collect their last name too. I can either require it or not require it and hit save. Perfect. I'm going to collect their first name, their last name, and their email address. If you want to put some content on this form, you may have a link that you're going to put on an Outlook page, an Outlook email you're sending out, and you may want to give a little bit more information on this form, you can come back to Snippets, and you can actually put a paragraph right here if you want to. Or you can add a video. Or you can add content. I'm going to not use that because it's going to go on my website. So it's Get My Awesome Offers, first name, last name, email, perfect. Now you notice the next part is a Submit button. I'm going to double-click that Submit button, and it opens up the Submit button builder. And we always recommend that you change the label from Submit to something else. So I'm going to put Send Me Offer. That's what my button's going to say. Sign me up, send my offer, raise my hand, save me a seat, I want it now, order it for me. Send me your newsletter, sign me up. Anything but submit. The alignment I can change to right, left, or center. And if I come down to where it says advanced styling and hit that little toggle, I can even change the background color of my button and make it pretty. Working further on down, I can change the font family. I can change the border if I want to. I can change the corners rounded, and I can also change the size. Someone asked, how do I create the text on the left and the fields on the right? Text on left, fields on right, it's already like that. So if you want to change the formatting of this, simply come to Format, Layout and Style. If I come to Layout, I can actually change the label position. I can move the label position to the right, or I can move it above, and I kind of like the way it looks above. Awesome, awesome.
and I'll answer your questions after so I can stay on, on point, and then I'll come back to your questions. And if, I, if you have to leave before I answer it, I will email you, because I just want to make sure I get all this stuff and have so much to, to teach. But if I see that I'm going to be answering the question, I will just answer. If you need um, everything to go straight across, that's using special code, and, and I'm not a coder. So you only have the limitations to here, your layout, and your style. So my form looks great. I really, really, really like it. I might want to come in and change it and make it a little bit thinner. So I'm going to make it 375. And that, I'm going to make it a little bit thinner, 350. I want to make it a little bit smaller, 325. Awesome. That's my form. Looks great. Now when you get done creating your form, you can always go back and change it. You're going to come up to this little button on the very right-hand corner that says Draft. I say it looks a little bit like a zipper. Hit it to Ready, and it will turn green. Ready is not scary. Ready just is telling Infusionsoft, hey, Infusionsoft, I changed this from default to my own styling. I just changed the form. Don't be scared. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to tell Infusionsoft that it's defaulted. After I'm done designing, and I will get to your questions, I promise, the next tab is your thank you page. And when you click on thank you page, it's going to bring up another page. And the thank you page is your real estate to let people know that they had a successful submission. All this does is pops up and gives them more information. Yay, your form was accepted, or yay, you filled out your form, or your book is coming in the mail. You should see it in five days. Put in here what you want to let them know and thanking them for filling that form out. It's a way of letting people know that a form was filled out successfully. You would not believe how many times I filled out forms and I don't even know if they went through or not because it just opens up the form again. It automatically looks like this. To change the banner, you can either delete it altogether and not have a banner here at all, or I'm just going to open it up, and I'm going to add my thank you banner. I have a banner called thank you. You can put your logo, etc. I just put in thank you. It says thanks for filling out our form and it brings in the person's first name. You can change that to whatever you want, and I'm just going to put your offer is on its way. It will automatically bring in their first name. And then down here where it says we will contact you shortly, here's your real estate where you can say you should be getting an email in a second. And then I would also type, I don't want to waste your time, but I'd also type, if you don't get an email in a second, please check your spam folder or your Gmail promotions tab. Sometimes they sneak in there. That's my personality. You may write it. You should be receiving an email shortly. If you do not receive that email, please check your spam folder and your Gmail promotions tab. Sometimes they end up there for some unknown reason. It may be a little bit more professional. Mine's a little bit more whimsical, but let them know, like you're talking to them, you're going to be getting an email soon. Go check your box. Yippee. The bottom says continue browsing, and this is where you want to send them after they get done here. Do you want them to go back to your website? Just link it back to your website by hitting link, www.infusionsoft.com, and as soon as they get done there, it will link them right back to your website. That's the thank you page. You can style it whichever way you want. The next tab is your settings tab. And the settings tab is going to let you know that it's going to check for duplicates based on a person's email address. And it also will, will give you the ability to get a notification every time somebody fills this out. If you want to get bling, 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 bling on your phone every time somebody fills this out, simply put your email address here. and you'll get notification. What's a notification email going to say? Whatever you put here and whatever somebody fills out. So your subject line is going to say a web form was filled out for my offers 
for, for my offer, change this to whatever they're signing up for, put in your email address. If you have more than one person that you want to notify, put a comma and put their email address and they'll get all that information too. If it's someone filling it out and sending their phone number and their address in that email, it will include their name and everything else they filled out in that form. If you're getting too many notifications and your phone is blowing up, simply get rid of your email address here and you won't get those anymore. You can still find the person. You can still find them based on tagging them, etc., or doing a web form tracking, but don't have to worry about getting those notifications if you don't want them. The next tab is your code tab. I'm just going to let you know right now your code tab you only grab after you publish your campaign. If you grab your code before you publish your campaign, you're going to get that default form that I showed you at the beginning that I said make sure you look at this. It's gray, says name, email address, and submit, and that's it. When you publish your campaign, it takes that code and it lets Infusionsoft know that it's ready to be used. So you don't grab your code, you don't send your code to your developer, you don't go to your code until your campaign's been published. But I'm going to show it to you now just to show you. If you notice, we have a do-it-yourself section. We also have a ha have your webmaster do it. If you have someone that's going to be working with you and going to you do your website for you, simply put their email address here and then put in a message right here. Hey Tom, can you get this on the website ASAP? It's ready to go. Don't send this to them until it's published. Your webmaster will get everything they need. They don't need to be a user inside Infusionsoft to have access to it. If you're going to do it yourself, you have the code right here. You publish your campaign, you grab the code, you copy it, and then you go to your website, go to your admin pages, and drop that code in a text box. As soon as you do, that code will appear on your website. So you're thinking, well, I don't have a website, Judy. I'm just starting out, and I'm going to be doing Facebook ads and pay-per-click ads right now. Awesome. Use a hosted version. This gives you a link to a hosted version that Infusionsoft will actually host for you. So you don't even need a website yet. The only difference between this web form URL and this pretty URL, trying to grab it, is you can change the name of this. You can just change the name of the ending. Don't get the code until after you publish your campaign. Now we're going to go back to our campaign, and you'll notice that our web form is now kind of gray-green with stripes through it. That says, hey, Infusionsoft, I changed it from default and it's ready. Every time you change that, you're going to have to republish. So if you go in and make your form different, you spelled the, you know, the word there wrong, you need to go in and republish it in order for Infusionsoft to pick up those changes. Web form is done. When we double clicked it, our web form builder opened up. Here's our sequence. It's still gray. When I put my cursor in the middle of the sequence and double click, it's going to open up our sequence builder. And the sequence builder always starts with a start. And that start is saying to you, what do you want to happen next? Yay, a goal was achieved. Now what do you want to happen? And this is where you get to do the automation. The tools are on the left-hand side. And if you've listened to enough webinars or your coaches or anyone at Infusionsoft, you'll know that we always recommend that you tag people to tell us what list they belong to. Well, I want to tag these people and put them in my offer list. Just in case next month, if they don't purchase, I can send them a, a nice email with another offer in it. So I'm going to come down to Process in my tools, grab the tag, and place it right next to the start. The arrow will automatically appear. If you'll notice, the Start button is green, meaning it's already ready, but the tag is gray. Gray means it's not ready, so I'm simply going to put my cursor in the middle, double click, and the tag builder opens up. I want to apply the tag offer sign up. So I'm going to put offer 
oh, I already have that tag made, offer sign up list. But since we're going to test this out and I want to show you that I didn't just, just make this up, I'm going to put March offer sign up. Create, save, and now it turns green and gray-green or green with gray stripes means, hey, it's ready. Now what do I want to do? Well, I told them in the thank you page that they're going to be getting an email in a second. So I got to send an email. Awesome. I'm going to come over to communications in my toolbar, grab an email, and drop it. Oh, that little blue box appeared again. That says name me something different than generic untitled email. So I'm going to call this one offer one and welcome. This is offer one. They signed up for the offers. I want to tag them so I know what list they belong to, and I want to send them an email immediately. If you notice that email is gray, when it's gray, if you simply double click it, it's going to bring us into our email builder. You can start from scratch and pick out a template, or you can go to your templates if you've already created some, and I've already created one. And I think I'll use. this one. Use template. There it is. Come up and set it ready. So up in the right hand corner I need to set that little draft as ready. Go back to my sequence and now you'll notice that that's green. Now what do I want to do? They signed up for my offer. I sent them an email immediately. Hmm, what do I want to do? Well, I'm going to have a, a button there for them to purchase something and if they don't grab that offer I want to send them another email. So I'm going to wait a couple days, so I'm going to grab a timer in my toolbar. I think I'll wait four days, timer's gray, double click it, and the timer builder opens up. I'm going to wait four days, and I'm going to send another email. I can either grab one from my toolbar on the left-hand side, or since I already have my branded email in here, the one that I want to use, I'm just going to right-click my email make a duplicate of it, move it over, put them together by going to the icon before and taking that clock and connecting them, and then I'm going to double click underneath and change this to Offer 2. And this is going to be 10%. The first one might be 5%. Actually, the first one might be 10% and this one's going to be 20%. Double click go in and change the email because I don't want to send the same exact content. Change the email, change the title to Second Chance. Set it to ready and on the black toolbar all the way to the left go back to my sequence. Getting a tag, offer one, wait four days, offer two and hmm, Sometimes it takes about five touches, so I'm going to send another email. I think I'll wait four more days. And then I'm going to just copy email number two. And you can go all the way to the right if you want, but I'm going to connect them from, left, from right to left so that you can see what happens. I'm going to change this one to offer three, 30% off. Then I'm going to double click that email and change it to third time's a charm. I did this last week and today I got my third time's a charm email. So I put myself in the campaign to test it and I just got it today and I think that's funny. It's like third time's a charm, didn't I write that? Set it ready, change the content, go back to the sequence and there we have offer three. I'm going to put one more delay timer and I'm going to wait two weeks because I don't want to pester these people and have them, you know, opt out. So I'm going to wait two weeks and put another email. I'll just take one from here. You can see the arrow automatically appears and this is offer four, 50% off. Boy, that's a good deal. Now there's a method to my madness. I have four days then I have four days, and then I have two weeks. So I don't have to have this email done yet. I'm going to go ahead and set the sequences ready by clicking on the little draft button and go back to my campaign. 
Now you can see we have green and green. And since I have an offer in here, I need a way to sell it. I have a link that they can click on and purchase. You may have a link that they just click on and get a coupon. I actually have a product, so I'm going to put my shopping cart here. I'm using Infusionsoft's shopping cart. I'm going to double click the shopping cart and I'm going to say any purchase. And now you can see we have goal, sequence, goal. And if they purchase, I may want to put another sequence here. That's called deliver product and upsell. Goal, sequence, goal, sequence. All of these are ready. This one is not. That's okay. I want to test it out. So I'm going to come to the blue publish button in the right-hand corner where the draft button usually is and click on it. Infusionsoft is going to put some little binoculars on and it's going to check out my campaign and see if it functions correctly. We know two elements are marked as not correct. We have a clock in there, a timer in there for two weeks out. And then we are a, an email that's gray. So we have a two-week timer, but we have an email that's not done. And then we have a sequence that's not done. That's okay. The most important part of this campaign checklist is right here. Campaign, passes, functional, inspection. That means everything that you have set up right now, and I'm pointing to the campaign with my fingers, is going to work. So I'm going to hit the Publish button. And you don't have to worry. It's not going anywhere because we don't have our code anywhere. As soon as you publish it, it goes into reporting mode. That document that I'm sending you that Jill created is going to go into this reporting mode and go over all of this, so I'm not going to go over it. I'm going to go back to my campaign and show you that the colors have changed to dark, dark green. And dark, dark green means it's published. You are in the Emerald City. You are there, and you can test it out now. Or you can go ahead and grab the code and send it to your developer or you can grab the code and put it on your Facebook ad. I'm going to test it out right now by double-clicking the goal. When I double-click the goal, I can either come up to test right here in the right-hand corner, or I can click on code, I'm going to do that, and go to the hosted version. I'm going to click on the hosted version, and it's going to open up, and that's exactly what it would look like if somebody clicked on it in a Facebook ad. So you may want to put a banner and some content. If it's on my web, my website, it's going to look like this, but this is the hosted version. So if you send it off in an Outlook email, or you send it off in a postcard and say, hey, click on the, go to this URL and click on this link, that's what it's going to look like. And now I'm going to fill it out. I'm going to put in Judith, did I spell it right? Yep. Miller, and I'm going to put a whole bunch of R's, and in Judith I'm going to put a whole bunch of H's so you can see how it works. And my email address is hey Jude Miller and I'm going to hit send me the offer. Your offer's on its way, Judith with three H's or four H's because that's how I typed it. If somebody puts Santa in there, the word Santa will show up. It says, thank you, your offer's on its way, yes. I should be getting an email in a second. So I know that part worked. Let me open up another Infusionsoft, open it up again, another, another tab. That's nice. This time I'm going to come in from my dashboard and search for Judith with three or four H's. There she is right there. I'm going to open up her contact record. And I should get that March offer sign-up tag. So here's my name. Here's my last name with the R's. And if I scroll down, you'll see March offer sign-up. It was signed up on the 23rd of March. I just signed up so we know it worked. That tag was assigned or added to my contact record. If we come down here to the campaign tab right in the middle, you guys won't have the stealth one. I always get that question. That's for employees. But if you look at the campaign tab, you can see recent campaign history. I signed up on the 23rd at 10.33 a.m. Arizona time. Infusionsoft secretly applied a tag 
at 1033 Arizona time. The contact doesn't know it. We just know it. And offer number one, hey, welcome and here you go, was sent at 1033. Immediately, all of that happened. Then you can scroll down and see that on the 27th, they're going to get offer two. On the 31st, they're going to get offer three. And then there's a wait. So we know that the campaign is functioning because we put ourselves in it and it worked. Well, Judy, that's not good. What if they buy from email number one and then on the 27th they get 20% off and on the 31st they get 30% off? They are going to be very, very upset with me. Let me show you how Infusionsoft takes care of that. I'm going to go back in the campaign. I'm going to make it bigger. And I'm going to move it. If you notice, this sequence right here has something right in the left-hand corner, and it's a flag. And it already defaults and automatically defaults to that flag. If you click on that flag, a box appears. And the box says, hey, Infusionsoft, if somebody takes the offer and has a successful purchase and reaches the next goal, please stop everything from the left back and move everything further to the right. If you've ever heard the word, push them further on down the funnel, that's this. Hey, Infusionsoft, if they buy it for 20% off or if they buy it for 10% off, please do not send them the 20 and 30 and 40% off. They will hate me. It automatically defaults to the flag. The flag says, hey, if they have a successful purchase or if they reach the next goal, please stop everything here and move them further on down the funnel. If you notice, there's also another one that says run until completed. Well, why would we ever use that? Let me give you an example. I'm a dog groomer, and I have a 50% off coupon right here for them to get. But I promised them a five-part series, and the five-part series is how to bring your dog to the groomer stress-free. And I made five cute little videos, and I promised them five cute little videos every day. If they clicked on the link for my coupon or clicked on the link to set up a grooming appointment, it doesn't matter. I still want them to get all five of those emails because I promised them those five, five videos. So I want it to run until completed, even if it pushes them on to deliver the coupon. For the most part, you're going to use stop it immediately. Move them further on down the funnel. make this smaller. Now I bet you're also wondering, hey Judy, I met 25 people at an event last week or 15 people at an event and they wanted to sign up for my offers but I didn't have my campaign published yet. Now I want to put them in here. I don't want to make them all go to my website and fill out a form. That would be silly. Can I just drop them in the deliver offer? Can I just drop them into this campaign? You can. Let me show you how. You're going to come to your contacts, and you actually search for the people that came to your event. So I'm going to bring up my save search from yesterday. Here's the 15 people that came to my event, and I remember that these people asked for my offers, those seven people or so. Check their names, or up on top you can check all of them, and I come to the Actions button. When I click on the Actions button, I come almost all the way down to the bottom and hit Start or Stop Sequence. It says, hey, Judy, you picked seven people. What do you want to do to them? I want to start them in the Sign Up for Special Offers, and I want them to go to Deliver Offer and More, and I hit Process Action, and Infusionsoft will scoop up those seven people, and it will push them right into that campaign. It will drop them in immediately. And they'll get, hey, thanks for signing up, offer one. If they purchase on offer one, it will take them out of that sequence and push them further on down the funnel. Pretty cool, right? If you have a campaign that you need to test out and you can't wait four days, four days, and a week, let me show you what you can do. Double click, and you can come to the clock. So I'm going to double click four days, and you can change it to minutes. Once you change it to minutes, it defaults to 30 put in five and hit save and you can change that for five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. You do have to republish. Every time you do something different in here, you need to republish it or the changes won't take place.
So again, to reiterate, gray means not ready, light green with stripes means ready, emerald green means it's ready to be published and the code is ready to use. Buckle your seatbelts because this is a real campaign right here and I'm sure Irish and Kevin and Marielle, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get there. I'm going to put it under a microscope for you and, and break it down. It's just a goal that pushes to a sequence that pushes to a new goal so everything on the left stops and it pushes them on the right. Another goal is reached, they go into a different sequence and another goal is reached and everything on the left stops. It's a goal that pushes to a sequence that pushes to a goal that pushes to a sequence. Remember this one thing that's super, super important. Your simple one campaign, like what's on the left, is way more important and better than your unpublished right campaign. Some people try to build out what's on the right, and they never get it done because it's too complex. They never test it out. It's too darn scary, and if it doesn't work, they don't know where to go. But all that's on the right is simply a goal that pushes people to a sequence, that pushes them to another goal when they reach it. It just pushes them to another sequence. But it's super important to create this simple one before you create the one that's on the right. It's just like driving a stick shift. You get better and better, better at it, and things start making more sense, and you, you just, your fingers just, your hand just puts it in reverse. You just know how to do it because you've been doing it so much. So it does take some practice. You can do it. My challenge for you is to get inside the application, build out a simple campaign, create and automate with the builder, publish it, then put yourself in, test it out and see the magic happen. We've had people that have made really simple three email campaigns, three emails, and have made $10,000 in 10 minutes. If you have the right list, you're marketing to them correctly, putting in some great content, giving them an awesome offer, 10% of your people are actually going to click on those and you're going to start making money. You are the, the expert of your business, not Infusionsoft. You just need to know how to put it all together. And that's what this is going to help you do. So get in there and do it. Play around with it. Learn how to use the software. And I promised you I took that picture with my iPhone. Isn't it cool? In Rocky Point, Mexico. And let's go to questions. So Chanel, I did teach you how to test it. You just go into the code and click on it and you can test it out. Um, Fritz asked, how do you create the text on the left and the fields on the right? The title, Get My. Um, I think what you're asking is you want the, the, co the information on the left and then you want the fields on the right. And I think you're thinking more of a landing page. So if you grab the goal landing page, double click it, you'll be able to come here. I don't even know if you can do it here anymore. You used to be able to have two columns. Let me see, format, layout and style. There we go. Yeah, in our new builder, I don't think it lets us move this over to the right and left. So if you wanted to put your content on the right and the fields on the left or your content on the left and fields on the right, you would have to have somebody come in and help you with code. Rob Russell asked, can we create custom fields and when they filled out in the existing client, will the answers remain attached to the client? Yes, you can. So let me go back. Go into our offer sign up. I can come into field snippets. I can grab other, move it down, and this field would be a custom field. And I'm going to put in pet's name. There's the text field, save this field, and when someone fills this out, 
that field, pet dog's name will automatically be saved in that person's contact record. Can you make the field boxes taller? If you come to Format, come to Layout and Style, come to the Style section, click on whatever style you're in, you can come, come down here and label size. So you can come and change option text size. I think that will make it bigger just like that. So that's how you can make things bigger under Format, Style, and then you go into the Style. Felipe asks, does the code change every time the campaign is republished? If you change something in here, the code changes. But if you republish and you're just changing an email, the code will not change. So if I go into my campaign, If I go into my campaign, come on, come on, come on, and I change something here in this email and I set it ready, I got to get an email in there first. Come on. So I'm going to use this template. When I change this, this code will not change. But if I come into my form and I change something in my form, so maybe I put in a picture. So I decide to add an image. Now I need to republish and reinsert my code to the website because it will, it will not change until I republish. Rob, again, back to testing. If we are just using an Infusionsoft hosted page, I guess we can test it. But will someone else on the web be able to find that page? Can you repeat that part? So if you're using our hosted version, that's not on your website. Nobody will be able to use this version unless you send them the link. So I can copy this link. Copy the link. I can open up an email, and I can paste that link in an email. And if somebody clicks on it, it will actually open up that form. If you want it on your website, if you want people to find it on your website, you're not going to use this, you're going to use the code. You're going to put the code in a text area on your website and it will look more like this. Here's the form right here. That's the form. Oh no, where'd it go? That's the form right there. He has a title, hey friend, welcome to my blog, subscribe to my newsletter, first name, email. He took the code and he put the code in a box in a text area on his pages on his website. This is not the hosted version, this is the code. Nobody will be able to find this or they'll be able to find this if it's on your website, if you're using the hosted version and you're testing it out, until you take that link and put that link somewhere, nobody's going to be able to find it. You can put it on your Facebook page, and if somebody clicks on it, let me show you an example. I got a good example to show you. You're going to like it. I have a basic training channel. If you look right here, there's a little box that says marketing ideas. But I don't have a website anymore. I got rid of it because it was costing me too much money and it was just for show. It was just play. So I'm using an Infusionsoft hosted form. I put the code underneath this little box right here. And if somebody clicks on it, this is the hosted one. Not the code, but the hosted URL. 
If I click on Marketing Ideas, this is a hosted form hosted by Infusionsoft that if people fill this out and hit Sign Me Up, they're going to be added to Infusionsoft, tagged, and then they're going to get my marketing ideas. People can find this on my YouTube channel, but I don't have a website, so I'm using the hosted form. That's how someone can find it. Hope that makes sense. Can you repeat the part, perhaps show us how you would test after putting it in your email? How would you use a landing page? So a landing page is a little different. A landing page gives you content and a form. Whereas if you're putting it on your website, you already have everything on your website. Your website has all your content on it, and you just have a form. You just need the form because you're already getting the content. You use landing pages more for Facebook ads, for um, pay-per-click ads, or if you are um, sending out an email with just a link in it, you may use a landing page because you can give more information. If we go back to Chris Beat Cancer, Hold on for a second, I have to call. I'm back. This is his website. He doesn't need a landing page because people are landing on his website, so all he needs is a place to capture the information. If he did not have a website and he was just posting a link on Facebook, he'd want a landing page so he can add a video and then add the form. So that's the difference. The landing page is when you don't have somewhere for them to land. You don't have a website. So you have to make a page that you can give them content and a form. All landing pages is content and a form. A website has the content there. So you don't have to make a form. You'll have it right here on your website. So I hope that explained it better. Me cancel that. So Rob asked, can we use the HTML code in Wix? Now Wix is different. Wix doesn't let you use the code, the HTML code in Wix. So in Wix, you do have to use our hosted form and redirect. You can say, click here to sign up, and under that click here button, you can have the Infusionsoft code like I did on my, my um, YouTube page. So on your Wix channel, on your Wix website, you may have a button, but your button may be a lot bigger, and it says click here to sign up for, you know, offer. They click there, and when they click there, it will bring them into Infusionsoft's form. Wix has funny um, rules, and it doesn't let us, doesn't let you use the HTML code. Sometimes there's ways that developers can go in and, and edit that code, but you're going to have to use the hosted form on your website? Good question. I, I did the Wix route, it didn't work, so I went to um, a WordPress site. But Wix is a great platform, it's very, very easy to use. You just need to redirect them to our form. So it looks like we got all the questions answered. If you have any other questions, or if you get in and actually build out that campaign, send the link to me. You know, basic training at infusionsoft.com. Send me your hosted link and I'll go test it out. Make sure you get in the software and play around with it. And there's no better thing than to set up a time on your calendar. Work on Infusionsoft. Work on Infusionsoft, make web form. Work on Infusionsoft, make content, etc. And it looks like there's not any more questions. So I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to give you the kitchen pass for the rest of the day. Thank you so much for joining me. Some people joined me three times this week, and I really appreciate it. I can't believe it's already Thursday. Have a wonderful Thursday. Keep in touch with me at basictraining@infusionsoft.com. Have a great rest of the week, and I hope that you guys will build up that campaign. 
send me the link, I'll check it out, I'll test it out and see if it works, and I'll send you some comments that I have if I have any. If I just have a, oh my gosh, that was so great, that's what I will email back. So thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for being an Infusionsoft customer. We do love our cust customers and we do want you to succeed, so we're here for you. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.